Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a viewer ask me, uh, and I'll flip it in here for you guys, ask me what do I think about the suicide grip. And you know what? The suicide grip or the thumbless grip on presses seems to be a controversial topic in some circles, and in other circles, uh, it's considered to be a complete non-issue. So it's kind of funny who you ask. So um, let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about it. All right, as far as overhead pressing goes of any type, this should be a non-issue. Um, meaning, Olympic lifters use this. All the best lifters in the world generally use thumbless grips or a suicide grip for overhead pressing of various types, whether it's a strict press, a clean and press, a push press, whatever. Uh, people lift enormous amounts of weight this way. Um, for years on an injury free, we lift way more weight and at a way higher frequency of training than most gym rats, bodybuilders, anyone like that's ever gonna lift. The reason is because keeping your thumbs under allows you to have better rotation of, of your arms, of your elbows and everything. It allows more free travel. Um, it allows for better bar pass, better elbow pass so that you can get more power behind it. You can get more tricep into any sort of overhead press. Um, and a more natural movement pattern so that you don't risk uh, injuring your shoulders. It is overall much, much safer. Now, some people be like, well, what if you drop the bar on your head? Well, you could drop the bar on your head with a thumb under also, but you're, you're not able to do the movement as correctly. You really shouldn't be overhead pressing with a thumb under. And it's a non-issue in terms of dropping it because, all right, if you're about to just pass out or something's going on, like you're gonna have a major injury happen, something's going to snap or you're gonna black out or whatever, drop it, you're dropping it on your head no matter how you're holding it. All right, it's coming down. Um, if you're failing to lift it, generally what's gonna happen, you can't lock it out. With a thumbless grip, um, you can just as easily push it forward and let it fall. And that's the standard procedure. That is generally how all overhead pressers, even using very, very heavy weights, uh, do it. They just slip out from under it. It's not like you're locked on a bench or anything like when we get the chest presses. You're not locked into a position to where you can't get out from under the bar. You can simply let it roll down. And actually, here's the thing. If you fail and it's going to roll forward and you have your thumbs over, you're at a higher chance of injuring yourself because you could possibly hurt your thumb, strain your thumb, break your thumb as a result of that. By having the thumb the other way, it gives you a direction that's safe to drop the bar to the floor that isn't going to damage your hand in some way. Um, because obviously rolling it backwards uh, could hurt you even from behind. I mean, sometimes you have to do that, but it can injure fingers. It can strain ligaments, break fingers. But if you've got your thumbs back, you can drop it forward. Because otherwise, if you have to drop, dump the weight forward, your thumb's in the way. And if you're doing that with a pretty heavy weight, that is just an accident waiting to happen. I mean, you could have a very, very serious hand in injury uh, as a result of this. It could require surgery. I mean, it could be very, very serious if you have to dump it. So it, the easiest way to deal with it is just be able to dump it to the front uh, with the suicide grip or thumbless grip. So for overhead pressing, this is really a non-issue. It's the safest way to perform the exercises. Uh, and everyone agrees. I don't think there's any actual debate on that that I'm aware of uh, anywhere in any strength training circles. So that's a non-issue but i get people who ask on both because of the the train the fitness world bodybuilding world stuff like that where it's an issue on chest presses i do get people who uh, ask about it on the overhead press we needed to get that out of the way first now when it comes to chest pressing we'll even just discuss flat bench i mean this matters on any bench but the flat bench um this is a touchy subject because some people get better leverages and are stronger on the bench press with a suicide grip all right they are stronger. And for some people, depending upon their leverages and strength, the free flowing movement of the arm, not only again allows them to um, get better leverages and be stronger with it, but reduce strain on the shoulder joints. Because again, it allows them to tuck better at the bottom uh, and still get more tricep in at the top. Because for a lot of people, it allows them to almost have what you call like a screwing effect more. So when they're pressing, uh, because they're not gripped around the bar, their thumbs are under on the suicide grip, they can screw in. See how my hands come down when they press? And then when they press, they can flare the elbows and pop them at the top. And it allows for, um, again, more power. So for some people, there's that advantage. Not everyone experiences that. Some people are not stronger when they do it. Some people are. 
Uh, so the issue becomes one of safety. And you know what I'm going to say with this? This is going to be the same sort of safety issue I'm going to talk about with the reverse grip bench press. If you are trusting a human spotter to be your primary safety on a bench press, um, you know, that's just not the best way to go. Honestly, uh, with a suicide grip, it's more trouble. Reverse grip, it's the same problem. But, but honestly, just running a single spotter on the bench press... Um, if you are lifting weights that you are in danger of getting hurt on, you're lifting weights that you're in danger of injury, you're probably in trouble anyways. Uh, meaning a human spotter doesn't always save you. I've seen people get hurt with human spotters who just tried to push too much or um, use spotters incorrectly. <clears throat> They're no guarantee. If you're going to do something that you consider to be dangerous, and in this case suicide grip, reverse grip, any of those sort of grips, uh, because they give you a mechanical advantage and better results. And you've got to keep in mind, for some people, there's less strain on their shoulder joints. They might be able to do their chest presses with a lower injury chance by doing the suicide grip. And that's a very individual thing. You have to assess that based upon your own biomechanics. But what I would say is that that's why we have uh, power racks. That's why we have... Uh, competition benches with catches at the bottom so that you can arch a little bit and if the weight drops or slips out of your hand for whatever reason it's going to hit your chest maybe an inch and knock it down and then hit metal pins and stop so it's going to keep you from getting injured now you'll get some people who will say yeah but it could still fall over and hit your face well if the bar has any chance of hitting your throat or your face when you're crawled up under a rack correctly you don't know how to fucking bench press you do not know how to perform the exercise and uh, i will that's a good test for any of you guys to see if you know how to set up correctly or get under a bench correctly take an empty bar and get set up and drop it roll it do whatever and see if there's any possibility of it getting on your throat if there's any chance the bar could ever get on your throat or on your face you do you absolutely do not know how to bench press you have no business doing the exercise until you go read and watch some basic tutorials on it. You don't know how to perform the bench press. And I don't care if you're like, yeah, but uh, this pro bodybuilder does 10 rep sets with 400 pounds that way and the same way that I'm doing it. Yeah, but he's an idiot. He doesn't know how to bench press either. Just because he's a pro bodybuilder and lifts a lot of weight doesn't know he knows how to perform the exercise correctly or safely. Uh, truth is, you should generally be set in a position to where your neck is past the J-hooks at the bottom and because you have to get tight on the bench press, if you really want to work your chest perfectly, your scapula need to be retracted. If you're moving the bar a really long distance from the J-hooks, your scapula aren't going to get retracted as easy. You're not going to get as much chest stimulation as you could be getting, even if you guys are doing it for bodybuilding. So the J-hooks need to be set in a way to where when you unrack it, you only move it a few inches to get over here. And a correct bench press is done to the lower chest, right? That's the only way you get proper elbow tuck at the bottom. That's the only way you can do a bench press without potentially injuring your shoulders. That is the safe and correct way to perform the exercise. So if you're set up in a position to where the bar only moves four or five inches after you unrack it, and it's over here under your chest, then your neck and face are behind the uprights already. So your concern's not that. Uh, because you can always hit it and then roll it down and do the roll of shame. All right, and roll it down if you need to without a spotter, even if you've got metal things to catch or whatever. If you don't, uh, you'll have to do the roll. But if you've got metal stops to stop it in any of the competition style benches or inside of a power rack, then you're okay. It's just going to knock you down a little bit. It might bruise you a little bit. Um, I've dropped 400 pounds on my chest before in that exact position doing a reverse grip, and it put a nice little bruise across my chest. But I didn't suffer any serious injuries. Um, it did make me glad that I had taken such safety precautions, though. I was grateful for the fact. I'm like, well, that could have gone worse. I'm glad I've been doing it this way and thinking this through. But uh, it's all about your setup. That's the main thing to look at. If you find that the reverse grip works better for your shoulder rotation and it works better for your leverages and you feel like it's safer for your shoulder joints, but you are concerned about the risk of dropping, then take appropriate safety measures. Um, you know, it, it's again, it's one of those things that in some ways can reduce risk of some type of injuries, but obviously the bar falling and hitting you with a heavy weight is a risk of a different type of injury. <laughs> so what you need to do is take appropriate precautions. That means use a power rack that can catch the weight. 
or use the side safeties. If you've got a competition style bench with those side safeties on it, you need to learn to set them appropriately and use them every single time you bench if you're going to use the uh, suicide grip. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. As long as you take those appropriate safety measures, it's no more dangerous than any other type of bench. And for some people, it might be safer. But at the end of the day, you have to figure out if it's ideal for you or not, if it's worth the trouble for you or not. Because ultimately, for some guys, who they're going to go through a lot of trouble for this. It might not add anything to your bench press. It might not add anything to your development. Or it might only add 5 pounds. Some guys can bench 20 pounds more with that uh, grip. And for those guys, I can understand them wanting to use it. And if they want to use it, then make sure that they're training in a gym with the proper equipment that is appropriate and safe to do so, and go ahead and do so. No problem. But if your gym isn't equipped for that, and you know that you can't really perform it completely safely, then uh, don't do it. That's fine. So what? At the end of the day, you can just do a normal grip and just learn to grip it a little bit differently to get a similar effect. There are ways that you can grip the bar to simulate part of the effect of that. And a lot of that has to do with placing the bar in the correct spot on your hand and running it in a crease right here instead of flat across here. You run it in a crease here so that when you grip the bar, your elbows are out at the top and you bring them in at the bottom so that you tuck and boom. It's just easier to do that more freely with the suicide grip. Some people find it really hard to do without the suicide grip, but a lot of guys, uh, you're going to find that you can get a similar effect just by how you place the bar in your hand and still get away with that grip. So ultimately, um, I have a neutral stance on it. I think in some cases it can be good, in some cases it can be bad. It depends upon your personal biomechanics. And it depends on what sort of safety precautions you take personally and what equipment you have available to yourself to ensure your own safety. Because at the end of the day, guys, no matter what we're doing with any of this, hopefully all of us are being safe about it. We're all trying to be safe. We're all trying uh, to improve ourselves, not destroy ourselves, not injure ourselves. So uh, I think it's funny that people always call it the suicide grip, but honestly, it really only becomes dangerous when used in an inappropriate environment with just a normal bench with a human spotter or whatever. Um, people who don't know how to set up correctly, but you know what? Those things do happen and there have been major injuries and accidents that has happened as a result of this. And those people didn't end up building bigger, stronger bodies. They ended up hurting themselves and injuring themselves. And so, you know, there's a reason it's called the suicide grip, but that is a bit of a hyperbole because again, it's just inappropriate use of the exercise. Uh, and, and inappropriate equipment and safety precautions that causes it. If appropriate safety precautions are taken, it is obviously no more dangerous than any other normal exercise. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.